Uh, I'm going to get you to turn to uh, Acts chapter 23. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the Pharisees and Sadducees. We're not going to do a super deep dive because we don't have time for that. Um, who knows much about the Pharisees and Sadducees? There's a few. Um, what we do know is actually mentioned quite a lot in the New Testament, right? You hear, uh, hear lots of, see, there's lots of scriptures that talk about um, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And, um, you know, we know they're pretty re- uh, prominent religious figures of the day um, and that Jesus uh, and the disciples interacted with them uh, quite a bit. Um, but I always, you know, when I don't know something in the Bible, I always go, why is that in there? What do I... What, what, what's the relevance or the importance of you know something that's in the Bible? And so, so I thought we'd do a little bit of a deep dive into you know a little bit who who they were and and what we might be able to uh, what we might be able to learn uh, learn from them. Um, so the Pharisees or Purushim in Hebrew um, were a member of the religious Jewish uh, uh, party, which are prominent to sort of around the sort of 515 BC to 70 AD. And it's interesting that they you know, sort of ended at that, at that time. We'll, we'll come to that. Um, and we often you know, read about the, the um, scribes and the Pharisees being mentioned in the same uh, passage of Scripture. Um, and that was because you know, the Pharisees were made up of these you know, two types of people. And scribes were like the lawyers um, of the day. And so you know, they could... Um, you know, draft legal documents and do up marriage uh, contracts and divorce bills and you know sales of land, etc. Um, but they were, you know, each sort of village you know, typically had a scribe, um, and um, and so the Pharisees were more more common folk um, perhaps than the than the than the Sadducees were, um, and. They were, you know, they were part of that sort of believed in the traditions of the fathers that went before them, including obviously Abraham, and. Um, and uh, uh, at about 100 BC, they, uh, they tried to democratise the Jewish religion uh, and remove it from the control of the temple priests. Um, and so you can imagine how that would have gone down, uh, not particularly well. Um, and, um, and so you know, they believed that you, know, you could worship God outside of the temple and uh, and that you know worship didn't have to consist of you know the bloody sacrifices that um, the Sadducees uh, used to do you know based on based on the law, um, and so they created the synagogue, um, which was a place to go and, and actually uh, worship. And so you can see you can see the traditions of the Pharisees you know coming into uh, into uh, into some of you know, Jewish uh, Jewish uh, religion today, um, and. Um, Anyone know who the most prominent Pharisee was in the uh, in the New Testament? Paul. That's right. Yeah, Paul was a Pharisee, um, and so we're going to read a little, little bit about Paul. Obviously, before he was converted, uh, he was a Pharisee, um, and so you know they believed in uh, you know, the the immortality of the soul. They actually believed in resurrection, um, not necessarily Jesus' resurrection, but resurrection from the dead. Um, they believed in angels as well, and so we're going to read here in Acts uh, chapter twenty three. Um, and it says, And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience with before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias uh, commanded them that stood by him to smite him in the mouth. So Ananias basically said, Hey, you guys standing next to Paul, can you give him a punch in the mouth for me? Um, and uh, they're obviously pretty unhappy. He was pretty unhappy with what, uh, what, what Paul was saying. And then Paul said unto them, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. It's an interesting um, description of, uh, of the Pharisees. And it sort of means, if you think about you know, when you render or lime wash a wall, you're sort of covering up you know, the ickiness of, of the wall. And that's sort of the reference here is that you, know, you look, you, know, you Pharisees, you sort of look like you're, you know, you're proper, but underneath really there's, uh, it's not that great. Um, and uh, the Strong's Concordance says it's a term applied to a hypocrite who conceals his malice under an uh, outward assumption of piety. So Paul wasn't holding back here, and he goes on, for, thou, uh, for sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. And they that stood by him 
uh, said, revilest thou God's high priest? And so they were, you know, are you really attacking the high priest here? And Paul said, I, w- I wish not, brethren, that, that he was the high priest, for it is written, thou shalt not speak uh, evil of the ruler of the people. Um, and when, but when Paul perceived that one part was Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. And when he had said so, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude were divided. I'm not sure whether he just sort of lobbed that in there just to get them arguing against each other, but I can imagine he would have, uh, he would have done that on purpose. Um, for the Pharisees say there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees uh, confess both. And that was one of the big divides you know, between the two groups. And in verse 9 it goes on and says, And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if the spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And so it's interesting to see how the Pharisees sort of sided with him a little uh, here. I'm not sure whether that's because they knew he was previously a Pharisee or that they were just you know, putting it to the, to the Sadducees. Um, but, um, but you know, there was a bit of a, a siding there. And they, the, the Pharisees sort of believed in two... They believed in the, uh, the Torah, which is the first five books uh, of the Bible, um, the written Torah, and then the oral Torah. We'll, we'll come, back to, um, come back to what that is in a, in a sec. Um, and uh, they weren't fans of Jesus. Um, that was, that's pretty obvious. Well, uh, I'll just read out of here in Matthew chapter 9. It says, um, And they went out, and behold, they brought to him a dumb man, this was the disciples, possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying it was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casteth out devils through the prince of devils. So, you know, they might have sort of sided with Paul, but they weren't, uh, they weren't big fans of, uh, of Jesus. And so, who were the Sadducees? Well, um, they were another Jewish sect which sort of came or sort of arose at about the same time, a little bit later um, uh, than, than the Pharisees. Um, and, uh, and in fact, both of them sort of drop off the, drop off the planet in terms of uh, history around about the time when the, the temple was destroyed uh, in Jerusalem in 70 AD. Um, and not much is really known about their original sort of origins and history. Um, but their name sort of seems to be derived from Zadok, who was a high priest at the time of King David and Solomon. So there may be some sort of lineage, lineage there. Um, and so these were sort of the high priests, um, the you know, uh, arist- aristocratic families, um, and the merchants, sort of the wealthier um, part of the population. So you can sort of see this disparity between the two. One more common folk, one sort of um, higher. And so um, it's a couple of other things. You know, they were... Um, you know, they were made up, uh, uh, you know, so they were sort of influenced by Greek um, culture um, more than the Pharisees were. The Pharisees sort of rejected that. Um, and they sided a lot with the Romans of the day. So they tried to, you know, and so they were sort of in with the Romans a bit. Um, and, um, uh, and so, you know, Hellenisation really is, or Hellenism is really a, a, an adoption of some Greek culture. So language and some yeah, history and yeah, some of the influences and religions there um, as well. Um, and so these Sadducees tended to have a more conservative um, view of, uh, of Ju- uh, Judaism. Um, and, uh, you know, they sort of claimed this Righteousness, right? In terms of their birthplace, you know, their birthright, almost. Um, and the, you know, this the Sadducees sort of tended because of their high priesthood. They tended to provide sort of the sole leadership um, of the Jewish community. So you can see how you know they might argue, right, or they might not agree. Um, but they both agreed that they didn't like Jesus. Um, and uh, they only believed in the written law or the Torah, so they only believed in the five books of, uh, uh, of, the, of the Bible, um, and, uh, which was you know, written, um, as we think, by Moses. Um, and uh, the oral law or the, the law that came uh, from Moses that wasn't written down, um, they didn't believe in that um, at all, um, unlike the Pharisees. Um, they didn't believe in the immortality uh, of, of the soul or resurrection. Um, and, um, uh, and they were so bound up in this temple worship, you know, their whole, their whole existence was really about uh, temple worship, that after the Romans destroyed the temple, they basically you know, almost, you know, they just basically disintegrated. 
And the Pharisees and the Sadducees seem to make up um, uh, the majority um, of uh, what was called the Sanhedrin, uh, which was the council of the day or the religious council of the day. Um, and there was sort of two, uh, it was like a court almost, and there was sort of two courts. There was a lower, there was an upper, uh, I think it was called the Great San, uh, Sanhedrin, um, and then there was the Lesser Sanhedrin, and they were sort of made up of you know, judges from these two, um, these two political parties. And so sometimes when you read in the New, New Testament where you hear about the council, um, sometimes that means, the, the, or often that means the Sanhedrin, um, which is made up of these uh, two parties. Um, and so we're going to read here, uh, I'll get you to turn to Matthew chapter 26. Uh, Matthew 26 and verse uh, 57. And so we read here about what happened uh, when Jesus was taken before, before the Sanhedrin. Um, and it says, And they laid hold on Jesus, um, led him away to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off to the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see end. Now the chief priests and the elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. Yeah, yeah um, though many false witnesses came, yet they found none and at last came two false witnesses and uh, said, This fellow said that I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answer us thou nothing. What is it? Uh, what is it which these witnesses against thee? And Jesus held his priest, his peace, not his priest. Um, and the high priest answered and said unto him, uh, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said unto them, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds. And then the high priest rent his clothes, so he tore off his clothes. Well, it was pretty dramatic, um, saying, "He's spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witness? Behold, you've heard his blasphemy. Um, what think ye?" Right? In Australia, we'd say, well, "What do you reckon?" Right? What do you reckon about this bloke? Well, they say, "What? What think ye?" And they answer, "He is guilty of death." And they spat in his face and they buffeted him. Um, they were not fans of Jesus. Right? They were not fans of Jesus because Jesus challenged who they were. He challenged their thinking. He challenged uh, what their their reason for being. You know, these both of these these groups were very puffed up in their own self importance, and Jesus challenged that. Um, and ultimately, although it doesn't say the Pharisees did, ultimately the Sadducees were you know, played a big part in his death. Um, and so, one of the key things that they they disagree on was uh, the Torah. Um, uh, and the Torah is, um, uh, there's a few different sort of names and terminologies um, that, uh, that you might have heard about or you might hear about when you're, re you're researching this. The written Torah or the law or the, or the um, Pentateuch or Pentateuch or depending how you say it. Um, and so we might just have a bit of a quick look at what these different um, books um, reference. So the Torah is the written Torah which is credited to Moses and it's the first five books um, of, uh, of the Bible. Um, and uh, which obviously covers, you know, um, uh, you know Genesis, which you know, talks about the, you know the beginning um, when when it all first started and the fall from grace of Adam and Eve and um, and the flood and Sodom and Gomorrah, etc. Um, then we obviously get uh, Exodus, which uh, uh, covers Israel's um, bondage of Egypt. Um, then Leviticus, um, which deals mostly with priestly matters um, and offering sort of the instructions and the rituals that need to need to be done. Uh, we have Numbers, which covers sort of the wandering of the Israelites and some of the bad things they did and other things, um, and the promise of, uh, of the land of Canaan, and then Deuteronomy, um, which uh, uh, recounts sort of the journey um, according to Moses um, just before they enter the promised land. Um, and so the Sadducees only follow these five books. So it's not in there. They're not really that interested. Um, uh, and then there's the, the Navim, um, which is uh, sort of the history of the Jewish religion, um, and that makes part of makes up sort of part of the broader Torah that um, uh, that uh, they follow. Um, and then you have the Ketuvim, um, which includes Psalms and and. Uh, uh, and uh, the Tanakh, um, which is sort of the overarching Bible um, that the Jewish people have, which sort of covers all three uh, three parts of uh, three parts of that. Um, and in there, uh, in the Ketuvim, uh, you know, things like Psalms and and, uh, and other things. Um, and the 
the oral Torah is called the Mishnah. So that's the uh, that that was handed down. They they decided not originally to record that. Um, it was recorded, I think, written down in about 1000 BC. Um, and the original reason is that they didn't want to, they didn't want to take away from, or one of the reasons they didn't want to take away from the original five books. Um, and so, um, and then the Talmud, um, which is, uh, uh, which has you know, more interpretation of, of Jewish law. And so what we see here is sort of the key differences between um, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and what they believed in. Um, and you can see uh, just on these sort of basic few criteria that um, they were never going to be uh, best friends um, and they were never going to agree. But they did agree on two things. They agreed on the first five books of the Bible and how important they were. Um, and they agreed on uh, they didn't like Jesus. Um, all right, so what, is, uh, what does Jesus say about all of this? Well, um, there's quite a lot of scriptural references that talk about you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Um, and uh, I'll just pull out sort of a, a few here um, that I'll read. But he was pretty critical. Um, uh, some might recall the story in John chapter 8 where uh, the, um, the Pharisees... Uh, uh, brought to Jesus a woman who'd been uh, taken in the act of adultery. Uh, I was talking to Curtis actually about this earlier. Um, and he said, where's the man? Where was the man? They didn't drag him in, but they dragged this, this lady in um, and they wanted to stone her. And, uh, uh, and Jesus, uh, you know, Jesus, you know, an amazing statement of wisdom, says to them, you know, he, is, he that was that without sin cast the first stone. Um, and so, you know, he was not a, he was, you know, was sort of taking it to them at that particular point. Um, in uh, Matthew chapter 12, he calls them a generation of vipers, which is not a very nice thing. The sons of snakes is probably a modern day translation around that. Um, and the scripture actually says, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. So that's a pretty damning cutting statement um, to, who they, to who they were. Matthew chapter 16, he says, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Um, and he says here, um, uh, and Jesus said, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And what he's sort of saying here is that even if you just take a small part of what they're saying, um, that's a bad thing. That's not a good thing. And it sort of looks like they're telling the right thing because they're talking about Moses and they're talking about the law and they're talking about these things that seem right. Um, but if you, take, if you take a little bit of what they're saying, right, be careful right, because um, it could cause you an issue. He then goes on uh, and calls them a wicked and adulterous generation. Uh, in Matthew chapter 16 again. And the scripture says, The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Um, and on face value, you sort of look at that and go, So here's this guy turning up saying he's Jesus, the Son of God, um, uh, prophesied uh, in the Old Testament. Um, you would almost see that it would make sense to ask for a sign for him to prove who he actually was. That sort of makes logical sense. But in verse 2 he says, And he answered and said unto them, When it is evening you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather, for the, um, foul, it will be foul weather for day, for the sky is red and lowering. O you hypocrites, can you discern the face of the sky? But you cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seek a sign, and there shall be no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas, and he left and departed. A wicked and adulterous generation. So obviously their intent um, was, not, uh, was not a good one. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of other things he calls them. Hypocrites, fools, he calls them blind, um, and he calls them, and he says that they say and they, and they do not. Um, we'll turn to Matthew chapter 23, and we'll read a, we'll read a passage of scripture um, here. We'll read, in, we'll read in verse 1, and Jesus spake to the multitude uh, and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. 
And therefore, whosoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and they do not. They're not a great example. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move with them one of their fingers. But all their works they do for, the, for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries, they enlarge the borders of their garments, and they love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the market, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. And be not called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all are you brethren. And when we read that, don't you see the Pharisees and Sadducees in some places today? Right? That it's all about it's all about them, right? They love the uppermost uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues. They love to be seen on, you know, uh, social media and Instagram, right? They love to they love to put themselves out there there as being the great preacher or you know, um, you know, like some of these big tele televangelists we see. Um, we see the same type of behaviour. Um, in verse eleven it says, "But he that is great amongst." The greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them uh, that are entering to go in. You actually have no way to get there yourself, and you're blocking other people from getting them getting there as well. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses and for a present pretense make long prayer, that therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Three times. Three times. He wanted to get the point across. Um, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, you blind guys, which say, Whosoever sh shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold and the te or the temple the that sanctifieth the gold. I think the feeling was mutual. They weren't a fan of Jesus, and clearly Jesus wasn't a fan uh, of them either. So, what does this mean for us? Right? What do we take away from you know, looking into you know, who the Pharisees and the Sadducees were? What can we learn? You know, why, do, why, why are all these passages of Scripture so important um, uh, to us to, you know, to understand? Um, I think you know why perhaps Jesus was so critical was that you know they. They professed godliness, but they didn't back it up. Uh, and by, by doing that, um, what they're really doing is they're misleading people. Um, and as we read in that passage of scripture before, they're blocking other people from getting to the kingdom of heaven. They're blocking other people from their salvation. They're blocking other people from having a relationship with God. And that's a big thing. Right? Whether or not you, you know, or you know, a Pharisee decides that he wants to you know, uh, follow a particular uh, theme you know, or do something a particular way, that's one thing. But when you stop other people, that's a whole other matter. And I think that's perhaps why Jesus was so, was so critical, you know, that, they, you know, that they looked godly but they weren't. And so for us, um, you know, the thing we take away is be godly for the right reasons. Not for, not for some other reason, but other than right, because God's asked you to follow a particular path. Follow that path. Don't do it for, your own, for our own self-interest, um, for our own image. Right? Do it because um, we, uh, we, want to be, we want to be godly. Um, they were pretty entitled. Um, they were pretty entitled people. And, um, uh, and you know, particularly the Sadducees, perhaps, because of their social standing and, and who they were. Um, and they felt sort of entitled to God's honour and maybe God's favour. Um, so for us, you know, we, we don't need to be entitled. Right? We are entitled to God's grace. Uh, we are entitled to those things because we've responded. Um, but we're not really entitled in other ways. Um, the Sadducees, again, particularly were big compromisers, right? They... They got with the, the Roman rulers of the day and, and really tried to get in their favour so that they could keep their good standing in the community and who they were. Um, we don't need to do that. We don't need to compromise our standards, who we are, um, what we're about, 
Um, and there's some pretty hot topics in society today um, that are hard conversations to have. Um, we had a conversation about this at Youngies last night. Those are hard conversations to have sometimes about what we believe, you know, what's in here. Let's not compromise on those. Let's not be like the Sadducees and, you know, because we, we sort of want to stay in favour with people, right? Let's, uh, let's stand steadfast on, um, on what we believe. Um, we should back up what we say with what we do. Uh, and uh, uh, and that's you know part of the uh, part of the, the challenge that these guys were hypocrites. They said one thing, um, uh, and whether they believed those things or not, but then they did did another, and they weren't really great examples. Um, and I think the other thing too is is um, it was all about them. It was all about them. They were needy. They, it was all about them. It was all about their image, their favour, what they were getting out of it. And so when Jesus came to challenge them, all of that basically was at risk. And for us, when it's all about us, then God doesn't really have an opportunity to move with us. He doesn't really have an opportunity to help us. Um, and I loved what you know, Michael was saying before that you know, when he... Uh, when he when he really got involved and he decided that you know he was going to look for ways to serve the Lord, that uh, the Lord really helped him, um, and that's what we're called to be, right? We're called to be servants. We're called to be servants. We're called to 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 do what Jesus has asked us to do, and we have no greater example than Jesus. The Pharisees and Sadducees were not an example, but Jesus was the greatest example for us about how to live our life, what things that we should focus on who we should try and be, uh, be more like Jesus. Amen? All right, we're going to have a time of prayer um, now. Um, all right.